The title of today's presentation is What about the name Jehovah and the name Yeshua? Are these false names? Maybe even deceptions? When trying to get to know someone, the first thing you would likely do is ask, what is your name? If you were to ask our Heavenly Father, the Creator, that question, what would He say? I am Yote Wafe, in Hebrew or in English, YHVH. That is my name, according to Isaiah 42, 8. Without knowing the true name of our Heavenly Father and His Son, then everything else just falls apart. We can use the letter W and follow Rome, or the letter U and follow the Greeks, or we can use the V and follow the Hebrew consonant Vav, as in Yote Vafe. These four consonants, Y H V H or in Hebrew yod heh vav -he, called Tetragrammaton, appear throughout the Hebrew Scriptures almost 7,000 times. That is the Creator's name, as you can see on the left. The name matters to the Creator Himself. No one gave Him His name. He is the one that chose it for Himself. He declared, this is my name forever. And this is how I am to be remembered from generation to generation, according to Exodus 3.15. Though it is yod heh will that His name be known. Scripture states, and let them know, that you, whose name is yod heh you alone are the Most High over all the earth. Psalm 83, 18. The Tetragrammaton is a word used to refer to the four-letter word yod heh as you can see here. That is the name of our Heavenly Father. Discussion ended. Since Biblical Hebrew was written without vowels, some choose to bring his personal name from Hebrew into English by transliterating the four consonants of his name as Yahweh, as Yahuwah, and others as Jehovah. His name makes him set apart, distinct, different, unique, separate from all false gods. The four letters of the Tetragrammaton form the root meaning to be, and some have understood the original meaning to be he who is, or he that exists. The bottom line is that there is only one Creator or Savior, and He is identified by His name, not a title. In Isaiah 44, 6, it says, Thus saith Yahuwah, Sovereign of Israel and His Redeemer, Yahuwah of hosts, I am the first and I am the last. Besides me, there is no Elohim. Though Yotebafe or Yahuwah is Redeemer, and the first and the last, the olive and the tough, the beginning and the end, the only one. Everyone agrees on the Tetragrammaton 
YHVH. But people are differentiating on the pronunciation of these four consonants as there are no vowels in the Hebrew. The question is the correct pronunciation Jehovah or Yahweh or Yahuwah. I will address that later. I believe it is easy even for a child to understand this. Come now and let us reason together according to Isaiah 118. Stay away from the doctrines of men and follow scripture only. We have been warned in Matthew 24, 24 by our Messiah, saying, For there shall arise false messiahs and false prophets, and shall show great signs and wonders, so much so that, if it were possible, they shall deceive the very elect. There are deceptions. Look out. There is another warning in Matthew 24, 45. And Yahusha answered and said unto them, Take heed that no man deceive you, for many shall come in my name, saying, I am Mashiach, and shall deceive many. Deception is everywhere, especially in religion. And millions of people are being deceived by religion. Remember, Eve was deceived, and the same devil is deceiving still. Now the question, what about the names Jehovah? written with J or Y, and Yeshua, written with J or Y, are these false and all the deceptions? We want first look at the name Jehovah. There are many theories of how to say the divine name of our Creator from the Tetragrammaton, YHVH. One of the most popular is the name Jehovah. The Christian translators of the Bible perpetuated a corruption and perversion of Scripture by following the Jewish scribes who for controversial reasons disguised the name of our Creator, which is a blatant disregard for the truth and the commandments to not add nor take away from the word of Yahuwah, as recorded in Deuteronomy chapter 4, verse 2. Jehovah's Witnesses admit Jehovah is wrong. In one of the most spectacular admissions in religious history, the Jehovah Witnesses admit that Jehovah is wrong. They say Yahweh is admittedly superior to Jehovah. The wrong spelling Jehovah occurs since about 1100, and then it offers its arguments in favor of Yahweh as a correct and original pronunciation. This is from Let Your Name Be Sanctified, Jehovah's Witnesses, page 16 to 20. Even worse, they admit that the only reason they keep using it is to please men, not God, not Elohim, not the Creator. While inclining to view the pronunciation Yahweh's as the more correct way, we have retained the form Jehovah because of people's familiarity with it since the 14th century. This is from New World Translation, Jehovah's Witnesses, Forward, 
page 25. The word Jehovah was first introduced by William Tyndale in his translation of Exodus 6.3 and appears in some other early English translations, including the Geneva Bible and the King James Version. Origin of the term Jehovah? Here is what happened. As a reference for Yah's name deepened. Among the people of Israel, they stopped uttering Yotevafe, and this happened around 300 BC. To remind readers not to say the revealed name, scribes began to insert the vowel points of Adonai, Hebrew for Lord, above the consonants of Yotevafe. When people read the biblical text aloud, they always substituted Adonai, Lord, for Yotevafe, God. Beginning in late medieval times, scholars who translated the Hebrew text into Latin and other European languages created the name Jehovah by mistakenly merging the four consonants, YHVH, with the vowel points of Adonai. Over the centuries, the pronunciation evolved into Jehovah. There is still another huge problem with Jehovah, or YHVH. No one really knows what it means. Most translators render YHVH as I am who am. Others preferred, I am who will be. Or he always existed and always will exist. He cannot be categorized. He just is. And some even translate it simply as being. Although some scholars even suggest that the ultimate fuzziness of uh, YHVH means that our Heavenly Father did not want to reveal the name at all. In other words, he was saying to Moses, my name is none of your business. Please remember that Jehovah's Witnesses have long disputed this standard account of the origin of Jehovah, claiming that it is the only true name of Elohim. However, the scholarship on this point is quite persuasive, and it is not the case. Why Yahweh is no longer heard? Now let's look at Pope Benedict's ban on using Elohim's real name. In August 2008, the Holy See issued a directive regarding the use of Yahweh in sacred music and public prayer. Two reasons were given. First, Christians have never used his name to address God in public worship. Indeed, Yahweh first appeared in Catholic hymns in the early 1970s. This happened largely through the influence of the Jerusalem Bible, whose English translation appeared in 1966. Many Catholic Academics favored this innovative translation and some trend-setting hymn writers like Gregory Norbert, Dan Schutte, and St. Louis Sheswitz began using Yahweh instead of Lord and God. Yahweh, they believed, captured the flavor of the Hebrew scriptures, especially the Psalms. The most obvious proof that Jehovah's Witnesses spell YHVH wrong as Jehovah is the fact that the letter J doesn't even exist in Hebrew, in Greek, or in Latin. Further, the English language did not have a letter J 
before about 1500 AD. For example, the very first edition of the King James Version, printed in 1611 AD, contained no J. Not even one. Instead, the letter I is used for Jew, Jesus, Joshua, Joanna, John, and the person pronoun I. Instead, these words were written in 1611 AD as Ayu, Aesus, Ayoshua, Ioanna, Ioan. In a stunning admission, Jehovah's Witnesses tell us that the reason they continue to use Jehovah instead of the correct spelling Yahweh is to be pleasing to men and not to Elohim. Another source claims that Jehovah was popularized by a Catholic monk who lived in the 12th century AD. In fact, Jehovah was never used before this. Though, in other words, it would be a Catholic invention. The form Jehovah results from reading the consonants of the Tetragrammaton with the vowels of the surrogate word Adonai. This dissemination of this form is usually traced to Petrus Galatianus, confessor of Pope Leo X, who in 1518 AD transliterated the four Hebrew letters with the Latin letters J, H, V, H, together with the vowels of Adonai, producing the artificial form Jehovah. This confused usage may, however, have begun as early as 1100 AD, note KB 369. While the hybrid form Jehovah has met much resistance and is universally regarded as an ungrammatical aberration, it nonetheless passed from Latin into English and other European languages and has been hallowed by usage in hymns and the American Standard Version. It is used only a few times in the King James Version and not at all in the Revised Standard Version. This is from Anchor Bible Dictionary, Yahweh. The first part of the sacred name, Yah, Y-A-H, was changed to Ye, J E H, as the J developed and the A was replaced with E to hide the name. The suffix Hova is number 1943 in Strong's Hebrew Dictionary and has a meaning of ruin or mischief. It is another form of Strong's number 1942, Hava, which is translated calamity, iniquity, mischief, mischievous thing, naughtiness, naughty, noisome, perverse thing, substance, very wickedness. From this we can see the folly of calling the creator of this universe the one we worship, Jehovah. For in calling upon this hybrid name, we are beseeching a mighty one, whose name carries a meaning, the one who creates ruin, creates mischief, creates calamity, creates iniquity, creates naughtiness, creates perverse things, creates very wickedness. The adversary, Satan, must certainly have a field day when mankind ignorantly refers to Yahuwah by the name of Jehovah, a name that perfectly fits Satan himself as a destroyer. This is from the website yahuwah.co.uk slash why not the name Jehovah.
Now we will look at the word Yeshua. Is that name a deception? Did you know Jews who hated our Savior, Yahusha, rejected him as their Messiah and mocked him by using the insulting name of Yeshua? They deliberately changed Yah, Y-A-H, to Ye, Y-E-H, so as not to identify Yahusha with the Father's name, Yahuwah. Yeshu, Yeshua, in the Satanic Talmud. Yeshua is a name the Jews continue to use to refer to the man Yahusha of Nazareth. They believe him to have been nothing more than a good man and a prophet. From Wikipedia, the free encyclopedia. For the related article discussing the Hebrew name Yeshu, as found in Talmud and other Jewish literature, see Yeshu. For the similar sounding Hebrew or Aramaic name, see Yeshua. There are several passages in the Talmud which are believed by some scholars to be references to Jesus. The name used in the Talmud is Yeshu, the Aramaic vocalization, though not the spelling, of the Hebrew name Yeshua. The name Yeshu is also used in other sources before and after the completion of the Babylonian Talmud. The true Savior's name can only be Yahusha or Yeshua. We need to understand that the newly created Greek Jesus never existed and could not die for us and for this reason he cannot be our savior this name jesus did not exist 2000 years ago this greek messiah is an illusion it is a copy an image of yahusha but not yahusha many of the teachings and deeds of the true hebrew messiah were credited though to that newly created Greek Messiah, mixed with pagan doctrines and Greek mythology. This is part of the ultimate, overwhelming deception. Constantine was a sun worshipper until his death. For political reason, Constantine established Christianity or reinvented it because actually Christianity existed 200 years before our Savior came to this earth and it was pagan. Though Constantine brought back Christianity with a new Messiah, whose name was Iesus, which during the 16th century changed to Jesus. The 1611 King James Version Bible was still printing the original name of the Messiah as Iesus. As you can see below, here is an example of John 1, 43 and 47. In verse 43, there's the day following, Iesus would go forth into Galilee and find his Philip and say as unto him, follow me. Verse 47, another example, Iesus saw Nathanael coming to him and say as of him, behold, an Israelite indeed, in whom is no Guile. The Father's name is Yahuwah. Where do you find the uh, Father's name and the Greek Messiah called Iesus or Jesus? It is required that the Son carries the Father's name according to Exodus twenty three thirty one, as shown in the next slide. Did you know that the name Yah, which is the true name of our Heavenly Father, according to Psalms 68.4, sing unto Elohim, sing praises to his name, extol him that writes upon the heavens by his name, Yah, 
and rejoice before him. His name is Yah, Y-A-H, not Y-E-H, Ye. Yahusha's name, which means Yah saves, tells what Yahuwah will do through Yahusha, which is to save the world from their sins, through Yahusha's blood. But here's another point, not in their sins, he is saving people from their sins. This slide helps us to understand what Scripture means by the Father's name to be contained in the Son's name. The Hebrew Messiah said in John 5.43, I, Yahusha, am come in my Father's name, Yahuwah, and ye receive me not. If another shall come in his own name, like Jesus, him ye will receive. When Yahushua said in the scriptures he comes in his father's name, Yah, it means he comes in the authority of Yahuwah, literally in fact bears his father's name, Yah. The original language of Yahuwah's people is Hebrew, and the Hebrew name for our Savior is Yahusha. But being translated from Hebrew to Greek, Latin to English, we end up with what we have the world calling our Savior, Yeshua and most call him Jesus, which stems from the Greek Latin word Iesus, which is a Greek god Zeus. We don't call the Father or the Son by false pagan god names, as this is an insult to our Creator. And remember, it is Satan who is behind all this. He is behind all this deceiving millions of people. And that is sad. But it's our responsibility that we are to search scriptures and find the truth and follow the truth. Scripture clearly reveals that salvation is available in only one name, in Yahusha. It says in Acts 4.12, neither is there salvation in any other. For there is none other name under heaven given among men, whereby we must be saved. The name the angel gave to the Hebrew-speaking Mary or Miriam and Joseph was Yahusha, meaning salvation of Yah. So let us not be ashamed of our Creator's name, and let us proclaim His name boldly as we are His people. Yahuwah said, My people will know my name, and proclaim my name so that many will be saved through obedience to the Torah. The question, or the Greek, Jesus Christ, is promoting a cheap grace, once saved, always saved, that is leading many into the lake of fire. That is serious and that's salvational. Let's wake up. When you change the names from Yahuwah to the Lord, which is another word for Baal, and from Yahusha to Yeshua, or Yeshua or Jesus, you are changing leaders. You could end up at the wrong destination. Don't let anyone confuse you and trying to tell you something different. Dale Carnegie said once, remember that a person's name is to that person the sweetest and most important sound in any language.
How much more is that true of the name of the creator of the universe, the savior of mankind? He wants to be called by his name. That's the reason he put his name about 7,000 times in the Hebrew scripture. We do not need titles when we have his name, Yahuwah, and the son's name, Yahusha. I am Yahuwah, that is my name, and my glory will I not give to another, neither my praise to graven images. The true Messiah is the one that carries the Father's name, Yah, in his name. All others are false. We are encouraged in Psalms 150 verse 6. Let everything that has breath praise Yah. Hallelujah. His name is so utmost important and significant that the scriptures tell us in Acts 2.21 and Romans 10.13 and in Joel 2.32 that whosoever calls on the name of Yahuwah, not any title, shall be saved, shall be delivered. Knowing his name is absolutely 100% salvational. If you are part of his people, you will know his name, according to Isaiah 52, 6. And it will be certainly a delight for you to obey his voice and to follow his Torah. Call upon the name Yahuwah, which is revealed to those with whom he is in a covenant relationship. He will be whatever you need of him and will joyfully fulfill the meaning of his name in your everyday life. Hallelujah. We conclude. Yahuwah, ancient Paleo Hebrew, is our father's name. Yahusha, in ancient Paleo Hebrew, is the son's name. You will by your voice and action praise Yahuwah through the name of Yahusha. Please give us a thumb up if you agree with this message. I highly recommend to watch the following videos in reference to the father's and the son's correct name. I do not know the individual presenters. In reference to the name, these are well-documented presentations. You will not be sorry. You will be blessed, and I believe you will be convicted and convinced. The first one is the name above all names under this website or this link. And the second one is why the name is not Jehovah on the dislink. This presentation originated partly from Lifeline to Yahusha Ministries. It was organized in a PowerPoint presentation. I added more information. I added slides and recorded it. You can contact me at malachi4.4 at reagan.com. You can go to my website, thefigtreegeneration.net or thefigtreegeneration.com. And uh, for free Bible studies, please contact Lifeline to Yahusha Ministries. They are located in South Africa. Shalom.